Hi everyone, this is Payana and welcome back to my book club. And uh, I haven't been doing anything in a while because I've been moving house. And I'm really, really happy with my new house. I've got a new house. And it is a house, like with a downstairs and upstairs and not a horrible apartment where you can hear everything the neighbours are doing. Because that was pretty horrific. We lived in that hideous apartment for four years with... Yeah, we were actually thinking the other day about all the weird shit that happened since we've been there. Because I visited the apartment the first time, it was in the daytime. And it looked okay, like there was no one around and um, you know, like no, not much noise going on. I could hear a few people talking, but that was it. But, you know, I kind of naturally assume that people make a bit of noise in the daytime and then sleep at night. And so we moved in and spent our first night there and it was in the middle of the summer holidays and um, there were people talking outside our window and as we went to bed it was about 11 o'clock and just sort of we didn't have a bed then we just had a mattress and we were just lying on this mattress and there were people talking outside and we thought well it's the summer holidays so they're probably students they're probably you know just just making the most of the holidays and come september uh they'll beetle off back to their lessons and they won't bother us anymore and so we put up with it all the way through the summer holidays, so June through to the end of August, thinking, great, uh, September's coming, and and they'll, they'll, they'll actually go back and to sleeping at night and not, you know, having a party outside our window until about 3, three or 4 a.m. sometimes. And um, it was, I mean, it, it was quite difficult because I was working back then. I had to get up at like half five in the morning uh, to go to work. So when you only got a couple of hours sleep, it was it was pretty hard on me. Um, I can't remember if my boyfriend was working back then, but yeah. So yeah, September came and we were like, yeah, finally we have to get a bit of sleep. And it was at that point we realised that these people weren't students. They were people who were the same age as us. So mid 20s to early 30s. And they just thought it was a thing, you know, yeah, let's have a party up every single night until 3 or 4am. And we started kind of you know, telling them, saying, look, could you please make less noise because we've got to get up and work tomorrow. And they didn't care. They just had us to piss off. And uh, so we, I think we called the police a couple of times. And, you know, the police would come. They would come regularly because we were obviously we weren't the only people that, it, that that were bothered by this. And the police would come around and they would knock on the door. I would see them quite regularly. and uh, But they didn't seem to think that it was a problem, these people. They carried on making a noise. And the only time they stopped was when there was a huge party and a big fight ended up erupting outside in front of these people's houses where they normally were outside our window. And the thing was, the next day, obviously, they got a lot of hate from the neighbours for it and the thing was they weren't there when it happened um these people were obviously squatting in front of their house but didn't you know did, they, they weren't around so they got the blame for something that didn't concern them and i remember the girl was outside and she was mortified she was ringing everyone saying how dare you do this now we're getting the blame for your party for your fighting and everything and from that moment on there was less trouble from them i think the police were called on that occasion as well so there was that uh they eventually moved out thank god but uh yeah there was the there were, i mean they weren't the only ones there was the guy who would hoover his car for three hours every saturday again outside our window who needs to hoover their car for three hours like why i think i've talked about this before uh, I, I we were like what he would just put the hoover in the car and then walk away and leave it running just all afternoon so he'd have the hoover like what wh why uh so that was weird <laughs> um we have the old man downstairs who was always yelling at his wife and again i called the police on him a couple of times but that was difficult because he didn't actually live there i mean she i don't know if she was his wife or his girlfriend but he would like only come in the evening and in the morning so he'd only be there yelling in the morning and in the evening and he was so horrible to her and i, I called the police a couple of times but 
the thing was like you know there was I couldn't do anything to him directly because he didn't live there so that was weird so we had to put up with him um, we had an old lady upstairs who would insult the kids I've got a kid and they would she would insult children you know she'd be they'd be playing outside I mean I think kids playing outside is cute but she would be like yelling at them being like you bunch of little bastards I'm gonna call the police on you and uh, I remember my daughter coming in one day with one of her friends and saying, oh, mommy, the, the lady upstairs said that you were a junkie and that you're always smoking on the balcony and that you take drugs and that you're always drunk. I don't smoke. I don't take drugs. I don't really drink either. So I just said, look, just ignore her. OK, just ignore her. She's not well. So, yeah. I had a real junkie actually came, someone knocked on my door, it was about half twelve, I was getting ready to go to bed, I was on my own, and I was in my pyjamas, you know, cup of tea, just book under my arm, I'm going to bed, and then someone tried to open the door, they didn't knock first, they tried to actually open the door, so so I could see the door handle sort of going click, 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 and I was like, what the hell? And my boyfriend was away and he wasn't due to come back for another couple of days. So I was like, surely he's not coming back at half 12. What's going on? Then the doorbell goes and there's knocking on the door. And I sort of look through the little eye pole thing. And there was this woman outside and I didn't know who she was. I'd never seen her before. And, and I thought, oh, maybe she's hurt. Maybe there's someone, you know, trying to hurt her. So I opened the door to see if she was okay. And I've never seen someone so stoned like she was so far gone and I don't know what she'd been taking if it was heroin but she was basically she looked like she was about 30 but her face was more like 70 like she was really bad really wrinkled um so the face didn't kind of go with the rest of the body and um she was like wearing this pair of shorts and like the zip was undone and the button was undone so she looked like her shorts were about to fall down and she wasn't standing up straight she was just um like you know slouching and I was like you know what do you want me to call someone Are you okay and she said oh I can't remember where I live tell me where I live um I, I don't and she seemed to think that she lived in my apartment like she was trying to come into my apartment she's like oh I live here I was like, no you don't bitch just go away uh so that was weird so all of that was pretty much came to a close in December or January I think when a, a new person moved in upstairs because the old lady moved into an old person's home and Oh my god, I really felt for this guy because he he was he was he had some kind of handicap. I don't know what it was, but he I know he worked in there's a sort of um place in the town where I used to live that was just like a workplace for handicapped people. I know someone who works there um who 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 helps in you know these people work and um and I know he he works there he's one of the workers but uh, and he was really nice like he actually came when he moved in he came and knocked on the door and said oh hi I'm moving in upstairs I might make a bit of noise and I'm sorry and uh, we were like yeah sure fine okay and uh, then he moved in and he he was lovely and he but the problem was people took advantage of the fact that he was mentally handicapped that he was vulnerable and started squatting in his apartment and there was five people I think up there at one point and it, it, it he had a tiny apartment like it was really just like kitchen living room a couple of bedrooms and that was it and uh, it was always smaller than ours, about half the size of ours, I think. And uh, and so, yeah, these people stayed in his home and they would fight and they would just make a lot of noise at night. And we there was even a guy who who beat up his girlfriend and who almost killed his girlfriend. And I got up because I came home and I heard, could hear her screaming upstairs and I took the phone, went out, smashed up. Her glasses were broken, like, in caught in her hair. She had a strangulation mark on her neck and she had, like, boiling coffee had been poured on her. And obviously she was panicked out of her wits. And, yeah, there was 
I mean, the police arrived at that point. I didn't call them. I don't know who called them, but they kind of just arrived just out of magic. And I was like, oh, thank God. But this was, yeah, it was very distressing for everyone. I was, again, I was alone at that, that time. But Anyway, um, new house excitement aside, let's get down to what this channel is really about and talk about books. And today's book is by Julie Otsuka and it's called The Buddha in the Attic. was interesting in a word I learned a lot reading this book um, I didn't I don't really know what I was expecting I came across it when I was working in a news agent somewhere between 2013 and 2015 and uh, and I don't know I just thought that I actually prefer the French title I live in France by the way uh, in, if you're new here the certain n'avait jamais vu la mer means uh, some of them had never seen the sea which it's actually how the novel starts um, this is a, this is the story of Japanese immigrants coming to the US at the beginning of the 1900s and uh, and that's how it starts it's, it's told from the point of view of the women so the women they are picture brides who come over on a ship they've basically been ordered by men who already live in the states and they've never met these men that they're supposed to get married to them so they arrive in the states and they obviously on a ship and uh, and that's that's one of the the, the 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 lines in the book that's one of the first things it says like some of them had never seen never even seen the sea before and uh, and they, they they travel halfway across the world to 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 come to marry these men that they'd never seen before and it's told from the point of view not of one woman there's not one character it is told from the point of view of all of them um so it's like um first first person but plural and it's quite interesting the way that the 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 the, the, narr the narration is structured because you have sort of one line for each woman like i don't know how to explain it it's it's, it's incredibly kind of well crafted because you have one line that kind of very vividly describes every single woman to kind of you know include all of them really all every single one of these women is included in this narrative and it gives an incredibly wide view of what it was like all the kind of individual you know stories all the individual cases all the individual people these these women that came over from japan to the states so the the novel kind of goes along in stages so first of all they arrive and they meet their husbands and then you have the wedding and you have the consummation of the wedding and then you have the children being born and uh, and and the work that they do and what it's like for them being in the United States in a culture that's obviously very very different from their own and all the different ways that they fit in some of them go and work as servants some of them uh, go and work in, in in agriculture others set up businesses and Japanese districts in big cities and how they're viewed by the rest of the population and how their children are viewed growing up obviously you know racism's always been around and uh, it hasn't I don't, I don't know if it's changed much considering that this was over 100 years ago and uh, the bit i found most interesting was how they were viewed because there was a lot of racism i didn't know they were basically persecuted on the same level as you know black people in the states and i didn't know about that and uh, the other thing I didn't know, because then the Second World War starts and Pearl Harbor happens and then things get very, very dark. Japanese men get arrested for no reason. They get a lot of hate coming their way and they get deported. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that Japanese people were deported during the Second World War in the States. 
and interestingly it's, it's quite it is quite grounding especially at the end because they they get deported and then the kind of white american families who are left behind they kind of miss them they kind of there's kind of a hole a sort of japanese immigrant shaped hole where these people that despite the fact they weren't much loved were nevertheless part of the culture and part of the workings of of this vast country and so what starts happening is people break into their houses the houses that are now empty and take all their stuff and then sell it and then suddenly it becomes very fashionable to have oh japanese lamps and japanese furniture and uh, sculptures it becomes very fashionable for a time and then they kind of get forgotten and it's like oh they, they they came through and they left and then oh everyone had japanese furniture for a while that was quite nice and then they're just gone and it's 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 quite it's yeah it, i don't know i found it quite heart moving i was uh i learned a lot from it like i said and uh yeah i i i, I didn't know anything about japanese immigration to the states and judy otsuka i believe is uh the, a child of Japanese immigrants in the United States and she is writing about obviously her people's life what it was like a um, hundred years ago so yes I thought it was very interesting very 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 well written especially it's not very long you know and it does really go along in stages from this vast point of view of all these hundreds and thousands of women who came over and their life and everything and it's, it's wonderful i really did learn a lot and I do, I do recommend stuff like this this is so well written it's so beautiful and uh, and you really do kind of feel you see you see everything through their eyes and i do yeah very very much recommend this the buddha in the attic by julia tsuka a wonderful japanese perspective from Japanese immigrants, women immigrants, at the beginning of the 20th century. So that's it from me in my lovely new house. And I realised before filming this, because I haven't had my computer for, a, and I realised that there is a video that I actually uploaded ages ago on uh, YouTube, and I didn't, because I have problems at the moment with YouTube, because I normally, I subtitle all of my videos in French. And the ones I do in French, because I do sometimes do videos in French, I um, I subtitle them in English. I always subtitle my videos. And they have changed the uploading thingy window on YouTube. And I can't find how to do subtitling anymore. Um, so yeah, I haven't worked that out yet. So I've got a couple of videos out that haven't been subtitled. Which is another reason why I put this on pause. So I'm very sorry. Uh, so yeah, I've got another video about um, My Sister Serial Killer by Oyin Cam Braithwaite, which I haven't put out yet. Uh, it was supposed, due to be out two weeks ago, and it wasn't. So yes, I'll have to get around to doing that as well. So I've got a lot of work lined up, and I've been working, which I hadn't been doing before. And, uh, oh, and the builders as well. No builders anymore. That's nice. They were lovely, the builders, but they did make a lot of noise. And so, yes, they... I, I can film as whenever I want now, basically, whenever I've got time. So I will try and do, I will try and do it more often. I must do it more often and I need to try and find how to subtitle my videos. So yes, I will get back to you then. <laughs> bye bye. Do we like the new house? of the new house. What about you? What do you think? Hey, do we like it? Do we like the new house? With stairs? You've never seen stairs before, have you? Hey? Do you like it? Oh, I think you do. I think you're happy. Happy cat.